Good morning, everybody. You know, there's a story of Jacob, and one thing about people who are gifted and very talented and also called of God is that Jacob, he knew he had this calling, and he kind of, uh, so did his mother. His mother had that kind of uh, God speaking to her when they were twins in the womb. Uh, but there can be a sense of because I have a calling, because I am very gifted, I can use other people and I can take advantage of other people. And he did that. He took advantage of his brother Esau twice and he took advantage of his father in his old age. And he really did kind of, and so did the mother who also had this feeling of the calling and of the special gifting on her younger son Jacob. And, you know, there's something, it's in anyone who has kind of any gift in service, in leadership, in speaking, in preaching, in music, in anything. There is a sense of, I have a gift, I have a calling, and I can take shortcuts, and I can take advantage of people because I am doing God's work. And, but, you know, the ends don't justify the means. We, we know that. And something about gifting, like, it, it, it's, it's just an overrated, sorry to say it, but it's, it's wonderful to have it. Thank God for it. Jesus says this. One had one talent, two, five talents. And using our gifts is a wonderful thing. And uh, we're thankful. But everybody has some level of gifting. But when you go through the characteristics of someone who is to be a pastor... And basically, these are, uh, uh, Gene Getz writes a book on this, these 20 characteristics. And he's, he did it with men in his church who are not particularly called nor wanted to be pastors. But he did this program because he says they're kind of characteristics of maturity that every Christian should aspire to and should aim towards. But of the 20 characteristics, none of them are to do with giftedness. They're all to do with character and integrity. And, and living right before God and just living a Christian life. The only one that does have any uh, uh, giftedness is the ability to teach. He should have the ability to teach. The other 19 are not. They're all to do a character. And the opposite, there's 20 gifts of the Spirit listed in 1 Corinthians 12 and Romans 12 and where is it? 1 Peter 4 and what's well, the other passage? You can, you can uh, figure it out there. Um, so, so those passages, 20 gifts of the Holy Spirit. And in those gifts of the Holy Spirit, none of them are to do with character. None of them are to do with integrity. They are all to do with um, uh, uh, just gifts. God gave us gifts freely, whether they are spiritual gifts. In this case, 1 Corinthians 12 and those, they are spiritual gifts that God has given when we were born again. Uh, or if they are natural gifts given to us by birth. Uh, and by privilege and by the kind of environment and nature or nurture. So whatever they are, uh, none of them require character. None of them require integrity to exercise them. And we see gifted people and we work with gifted people and we are ministered to by them. And we assume because they are very gifted and because they are in positions that it assumes character. It does not. And this is a warning signal for all of us that we can be Jacobs. I'm gifted. I have a calling. I do whatever I need to do to get God's will done and to get the mission accomplished. I'm on a mission. But it's like this is, this is uh, like the tragedy in, in, uh, in churches and parachurch organizations because they're strewn with uh, people who have been mistreated, used for the end of... Uh, progressing somebody's, you know, wonderful gifts and talents. So just lastly, finish. sorry if this is a little coming out that way, but I'm saying it obviously to myself. Uh, and there's one person, one uh, believer, he, he wrote a book, I think it was his second book he wrote, and it was very successful. He had a million copies. That's pretty good. So he had an agent, and the agent was bringing him to different publishers and different ones for... Uh, a third book or whatever it was so when he was working with the agent and he knew the agent well he said to her what happens what do you find over the years dealing with authors that that can happen as a kind of a snare and she immediately not even a second thought she said entitlement entitlement once they get a bit of success they feel I'm entitled 
in the beginning they're coming in so thankful. Oh, you published my book. Oh, wow, you're going to do this for me. And well, I feel thank you for all the help you're doing for me. Once they get some success, they kind of, they, they, they just kind of swagger in there, kind of like, I'm the guy, I am the man. And they have this entitlement, and I want this, and I want this, I want this. I don't know about you guys, I think I work with this other publisher, they give a little better this way. I work with. So this kind of entitlement, and, and uh, he thankfully shifted, and he knew like the replacement for entitlement is gratitude, a constant gratitude for Oh, God has given me some success. God has given me some gifts. God has given me some abilities. God has given me some position in order to exercise. And a kind of a gratitude is uh, replaces it. Well, I wish I could have said that in a happier way, but um, there you go. If you're Esau, uh, it doesn't come across very happy when your brother, who's very gifted and called of God, rips you off twice and... Uh, you know, and just leaves you high and dry. But he's entitled to it because I'm Jacob and I'm very gifted. But I'm sorry. You know, gifts, gifts, as Pastor Chabelli says, they're, 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 they're 10 for a, you can get 10 for 10 rupees. Uh, uh, give me, give me a faithful man. Let's see, can we get that? Okay. Hallelujah. Amen.